In this exercise, you'll add conditional cut or fill subassemblies to an existing corridor assembly. You'll do this by specifying two levels of conditional cut or fill subassemblies. In the first level, if we look at our completed assembly here, you'll notice that we have three of these yellow conditional subassemblies. Here's one for fill, here's another one for fill, and here's one for a cut. And you'll see that all of these are attached to this little object right here, which is a guardrail. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit right here so we can see the whole corridor assembly. After we've completed the first level, we'll move on to the second level of conditional cut or fill subassemblies. And that has to do with these ditch subassemblies that are attached to our first level. So let's go ahead and add the three conditional subassemblies within the first level. Go ahead and zoom in to our area right here. Within the Home tab and under the Palettes panel, go ahead and select this button right here for Tool Palettes. After that, go ahead and right click on the Tool Palettes control bar and make sure you're on Civil Imperial Subassemblies. Go ahead and find the Conditional tab and then go ahead and select Conditional Cut or Fill. After that, we get some new information within our Properties panel. Go ahead and look under the parameters of the subassembly. And for side, we're going to leave it on the left. We have the choice for right right here, but we're going to leave it on left. For layout width, we're going to change it to 20 feet. For layout grade, we're going to change that to a four on one slope. Oops. For type, select fill. And then for the minimum distance, we're going to leave that at zero. And for a maximum distance, we're going to type five. Okay, we're finished with that. Go ahead and zoom into our little model right here. And you'll notice right next to our guardrail, we have this circle. Go ahead and select that marker. And you'll see if we zoom out, it places our subassembly. Now, if you notice within the command line, our command is still active with our assembly. So if we wanted to, we go back into properties and under parameters, we can go ahead and start on our next subassembly. We'll go ahead and leave it on left and we'll leave it at 20 feet for the layout width. But for the layout grade, we're going to change that to one on one. For the type, we're going to leave it on fill. And for the minimum distance, just for this exercise, we're going to specify 5.0001 feet. After that, our maximum distance, we're going to specify 10,000 feet. So once that's finished, go ahead and select our marker right next to our guardrail. You'll see we have a brand new subassembly attached to it. Again, our command is still active, so we'll go and add our third subassembly. For the side, we'll leave it on left again. For the layout width, we'll leave it at 20. Layout grade, we'll have it at one on one. But for this, we're going to change the type to cut. We'll give it a minimum distance of zero. And we'll leave the maximum distance at 10,000. So now that that's finished, we'll go back in, zoom in to our marker, and click. Zoom out, and we have our first three subassemblies. 
Now let's add a daylight bench subassembly. Go back into your tool palette, and if you can see right here, we have a daylight tab. But if you notice, there's so many different tabs right here. One way to get past that is if you click down here at the bottom, you can get a list of all the different tabs. Kind of makes it a little bit easier to pick the one you're looking for. So we're going to go with the daylight and then select the daylight bench subassembly. Then go into your properties panel and under advanced, we're going to keep it on the left side of our assembly. The cut, we're going to go with a four on one. Max cut height, we'll go with five feet. Fill slope, we'll go with four on one. Max fill height, let's go with five feet. Bench width, six feet. And then bench slope, we're going to go with negative 10%. And we're going to place it at the end of this bottom one right here. So go ahead and zoom into our little circle right here and go ahead and select it. Now if you notice that there is a difference between the daylight bench subassembly that we just brought in as compared to the completed version right here. Now the difference can be found within the parameters. Under version, you'll see that this was created in an earlier version of Civil 3D, released 2012. However, our version, if we select it, was created in 2019. But, not to worry, both of these accomplish the same goal within our corridor. So you don't have to worry about that. Next, we're going to move and copy some subassemblies. Go ahead and pan over to this ditch subassembly. Go ahead and select it, and then right click and select Move To. And we're going to move it to this fill subassembly. Go ahead and click this circle right here. If we zoom out, you see how that moves over quite nicely. After that, go ahead and click that subassembly again, and then right click and select Copy To. And pan up to the top to this Cut subassembly, and select this end of the subassembly, and there you have it. Next, we're going to add a second level of conditional subassemblies. We'll bring our palette back by clicking on the Home tab and clicking this button. And right click down here at the bottom. And we're going to select Conditional Subassemblies. And go ahead and select Conditional Cutter Fill. Then zoom in way up here and we're going to specify some parameters. We're going to leave the site on the left. The layout width is going to be 12. But we're going to change the layout grade to be 0.5 on 1. Keep the type on cut. Minimum distance, we're going to specify 5.0001. For maximum distance, we're going to specify 10,000. Then press Enter. And instead of this hinge point, how about we select this hinge point? And we go ahead and zoom out here and it matches our example as you can see right here. Let's go ahead and follow the same process again for another subassembly. Click on conditional subassembly and specify the following parameters. Leave it on the left side. Layout width, we're going to keep it on 12. 
For the layout grade, we're going to leave it at one on one. Type, we're going to leave it on cut. Minimum distance, we're going to leave it on zero. And for a maximum distance, we're going to change that to five and press enter. Then go ahead and select that same, oops, that same hinge point. Lastly, we'll add a third subassembly. Under the parameters, keep it on the left side. Layout width of 12, one on one. But this time, we're going to change this to fill. Keep the minimum distance at zero. And then the maximum, we're going to change that to 10,000. And press enter. Then go ahead and select that same hinge point again. Lastly, we're going to add subassemblies to the second level. Go ahead and choose the generic tab within your palette and select this subassembly link, width, and slope. Now specify the parameters. We're going to leave it on the left side. Change the width to 12. And the slope, we're going to change that to negative 2%. Go ahead and zoom into our cut, this big one right here. Select this end. Next, find the retaining walls tab. and select the Retain Wall Vertical subassembly. Click on that, and we're going to leave it on its defaults. Zoom into this area right here at the end. Select this right here. After that, go ahead and right click and select Generic again. Now we're going to select this subassembly, Link Offset on Surface. We're going to change this to be negative 60 feet, and then we're going to leave everything else at its defaults. Zoom into this area right here and select the end of this subassembly. Lastly, we're going to add one more subassembly. Go ahead within generic and select this subassembly, link slope to surface. And we're going to change its slope to 4%. And we're going to change this parameter right here, add link in. We're going to change this to fill only. Then go ahead and select this point right here and here you go it should look like or pretty similar to the completed corridor assembly go ahead and press escape and that's how you go about adding conditional subassemblies to a corridor assembly in Civil 3D